next uh, panels will be uh, Paul Wright. Uh, so Paul is senior advisor um, forensic technology and investigation and accuracy. Paul is a specialist with 25 years of experience in cybercrime, incident responses, and digital forensics. He has a public and private sector track record of successfully delivering on investigative engagements for clients across the globe, which also resulted in him acting as an expert witness in both criminal and civil courtrooms worldwide. So, Paul, thank you very much. Uh, you have 10 minutes. Uh, I Thank you very much for that introduction and hello to everybody. Uh, investigating digital evidence and GPT, where are we going to go? Well, artificial intelligence is becoming a game changer for digital investigations. Its development will dramatically change the forensic investigation field. However, not everyone is completely convinced. It is not the ideal Sherlock Holmes. It is not the digital sleuth that will press one button and find all your evidence, but it can certainly become a smart assistant. Investigating digital evidence using traditional techniques can be enhanced by leveraging GPT or similar language models. GPT can assist in various ways, which are outlined on some of them are outlined on the slide here. It can provide quick answers to queries related to digital forensics. It can help investigators gather background knowledge, understand technical concepts. It can analyze links between data, such as repeatedly mentioned email addresses or phone numbers, allowing investigators to interactively and quickly yeah, identify key individuals and relevant subjects and key areas that need further investigation, which comes down to time management, which is always a big thing for investigators, both in the public and the private sector. It can provide guidance, suggestions for forensic methodologies, or recommend specific tools or techniques. However, it is based on its training on previous investigations. It's only as good as what it knows. It can assist on interpreting log entries, system artifacts, network traffic, and other evidence types and correlate them, which sometimes becomes difficult if we're using one or two different forensic tools. It can help identify patterns, anomalies, or indicators of compromise. All of which sounds very good. Is it the wonder tool, an investigative GPT that we're all looking for? It can also identify, potentially, gaps within an investigation, make suggestions, as to additional avenues for investigation. We always, on an investigation, periodically go back and review. And that's because things change. We always have meetings and go round the room and everyone says what they've done, what they've contributed, and where they think we should be going. Are we gonna substitute that human interaction with an investigative GPT? Can it provide suggestions for structuring information, proofreading content, and ensuring that consistencies in there in the report with regard to terminology and language? Very useful.
it is important to know it can help complement human expertise and enhance efficiency in certain aspects of an investigation. We see here the training process of the GPT. This needs to be extensive. But when this becomes extensive, what we do hit in an investigation is disclosure. And the, my fellow colleagues can't speak about disclosure, but disclosure is a nightmare. The other point here is who is building that platform? Who is running that platform? Now, if I put my bad person's head on, I think, okay, I'm gonna build an investigative GPT platform and you're gonna to come to me and you're gonna come and ask me questions. I'm gonna give you answers, but I'm going to learn all that intelligence. And we are playing catch up with the bad men and women out there. They are ahead of us. They are businessmen and women. They want to make money and they come up with new ideas. If you look at ransomware, it's constantly changing because they're making money. They're making lots and lots of money and people are paying that money. So if I was being innovative, I would consider as a bad person creating an investigative GPT for others to use. Criminals are becoming more and more tech savvy. Yeah, you might have your script kiddies that run the ransomware and this, but the core echelon of the cyber criminal is becoming more and more tech savvy. And as I said, they're one step ahead of us. Therefore, as investigators, we cannot predict crimes precisely with strict rules because they're forever changing. Moore's law with regards to transistors doubling every 18, two years, obviously slightly out of date these days, but that's what the cyber criminals are doing. They're thinking ahead of us and we're playing the catch up. It's a matter of how far are we going to play catch up with them? But at the end of the day, the ultimate responsibility and decision making will still have to stay with the human investigators because they bring their expertise, their specialism, their experience, their thinking, innovative thinking at times, and their knowledge of crimes and their knowledge of the people that commit those crimes, the profiles. And as has already been said, the knowledge of the victims, the knowledge of the modus and operandi, they bring all of that to the table. We obviously have to identify the shortcomings of GPT. If you ask GPT to analyze conversations and those conversations have got profanities in it, GPT will come back and say, I'm sorry, I cannot generate inappropriate or aggressive language. The program has been taught to refrain from doing that from engaging in such behavior. What else can the GPT not engage in? What are its shortcomings? Yeah. The other thing is it's new. And with all new things, there's no laws around GPT. The laws will come from stated cases, court cases. It will be very interesting. The first time someone puts their hand up, and says, I use GPT, yeah, whoa, then disclosure comes in, yeah. What data was in that platform? What training was done for that platform? We believe that there will be evidence in that platform that will prove our client innocent. 
provide us with the platform? Can you? With forensic tools today, you can get the like end case, open text. They will come to court and say the tool does what it says on the box. Who's going to come to court and say that GPT does what it says on the box? GPT is only going to be as good as the data it is trained on. What if the data is biased or incomplete or has errors? Yeah. But the time of use GPT in digital forensics is useful, but with a healthy dose of skepticism. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, the AI just said that uh, the time was over and <laughs> perfect time. Thank, thank you very much. And thank you for showing us uh, how the creation of an investigative GPT may look like. And uh, most, um, I think, even more to show some comments here. The first one is that not everyone is convinced. And we have actually to take in adequate consideration the opinions of the ones that are not convinced, I think. The second is that you said the current limit is that these tools are only good as much as the trainers and the programmers are. I think it's very important at this point. But maybe the most important one is the idea that AI, AI related tools may be used as assistants rather than as the rule takers. It may complement human expertise, but the ultimate responsibility should stay with the human investigators. And that's also important in terms of transparency, fairness, and accountability. So thank you very much. So